Hi guys, Phil here. Today I'm going to talk about um, addictions, but um, not your classic addictions like uh, alcohol and drug addictions, but um, more, I would say, I guess more ordinary, more familiar ones, uh, more common ones, such as addiction to sugar, addiction to foods, addiction to relationships. You know, sometimes people say, I keep on finding myself getting into relationships with the same kind of people, which are always bad for me, and I know it, and I know what it's happening, but I keep on doing it. Uh, addiction to uh, TV, to sitting on the couch, basically anything that's uh, repetitive and you find yourself recognizing you shouldn't be doing it, but you still find that you're doing it. Uh, and I was asked this question specifically about sugar addiction, but you can see it applies in all sorts of shapes and forms. Uh, addiction to procrastination is another one where people uh, make endless lists and never do it. There's so many different shapes and forms that it occurs. So what is an addiction? Well, an addi addiction really is, is just a habit, a, a very strong habit, and the stronger the habit, the, the more powerful the addiction. But fundamentally, it's just a habit you've got into. Um, that's been consigned neurologically to a kind of fast pathway that seems to act without you really having to do very much. So what are the main things that you can do about having an addiction? Well, of course, well, the first thing um, is to notice it, to be aware of it. I'd also possibly consider that you lose the word addiction um, because what it does is it makes it seem like it's a much bigger problem. If you reclass it as a habit or just a behavior you've got very, very used to doing without even thinking, uh, it, it starts to make it feel like it's something that's more changeable. Whereas if you consign it to, it's an addiction, it's something that I'm addicted to, it becomes a much more medicalized, much more significant and problematic thing. So maybe just change your, your language to start, start with. But start to notice uh, when you fall into uh, uh, thoughtless habits, and by thoughtless I mean, um, habits that you're not really uh, consciously choosing or that aware of and you just find yourself doing almost on automatic pilot and this is kind of the opposite of mindfulness so mindfulness is about being present being aware thinking about so there's some exercise you can do around mindfulness like eating when you eat to be very aware of each chew to be aware of the taste and the shape of the food in your mouth to increase your presence to that um, the opposite of that, a lack of mindfulness, thoughtlessness, if you will, uh, is these kind of unconscious habits that, that run all over the place. In NLP, this is the P of the NLP, the P which means the programming that we run on automatic pilot, we find ourselves doing things that we'd rather not doing, and on hindsight we often kind of go, oh, how did I do that? Well, uh, it's because you got trained into it for whatever reason, and, and the reason may or may not be important, but the, the main thing is, the more we practice particular pathways, the stronger they become. So if you've got very used to being a particular way, to doing a particular thing, a particular habit, a particular behavior, you will have built pathways that make that habit easier to do. And this is, any of you who've ever watched my videos before will know, is the concept of neuroplasticity. So if this is a pathway that comes down this way and it could go to that way or that way, if you keep on using the pathway, and this, this area is what's called a synapse, or is it a, cho a choice point, keep on going this way then what happens is the two nerves actually grow closer to the, together whilst the nerve that would take you in this direction starts to move away it gets bored right? so these pathways become very very easy to fire and this pathway to this direction becomes much more difficult so uh, neuroplasticity the more we use a pathway uh, the more powerful it becomes so what is the secret the first thing is to become aware of when these pathways are firing uh, habits that you do so gestures so if let's say your your thing is um, uh, at a particular time in the evening I always uh, think it's time for a snack and I wander into the kitchen almost sleepwalk into the, the cupboard or the fridge to be aware of that to go ah oh, I'm doing that notice any little catchphrases you have like oh I think it's time for a you know and find yourself disappearing off in a, on a kind of autopilot then catch those things now with the sugar thing I specifically asked about. It's, uh, it will either be adding sugar to stuff or searching for sweetness, searching for sweet foods. Notice when you're doing that, just bring that up to your conscious awareness and by doing that you'll start to have a chance to have a choice which is the next thing. The really, really important and very simple thing to do is when you find yourself heading towards a particular food, behavior, habit that you now have recognized is not useful for you, then ask yourself this really interesting question. 
and if you've done the lightning press it will be familiar to you. A very important question to ask here is what do I actually want? What do I really want? So if you say I really want that biscuit or I really want that sweet thing, in the case of sugar issues, just pause and ask yourself what do I really want? What do I actually want? And what you'll find if you, if you sit with that and just listen to your internal answer, it will not be the sweet thing. The sweet thing doesn't really give us anything. It gives us extra calories, which you probably don't need. It only lasts for a few seconds because we only really have taste receptors for sweet things in our mouth. We don't have them anywhere else in our body. So it's only about those first few seconds of actually putting it in your mouth. The rest of the time is a waste. So what is it trying to give us? What, what do we want? And if you ask that question, it will fall into a number of different categories. But usually it will be around fun, because you're bored. That's often what happens late at night. Comfort, a sense of needing reassurance, kindness. Excitement, reward. These are the common things that we have. But check in with yourself and ask yourself, well, what do I really want? Once you've understood what it is you want, and it may be different on different moments when you want this thing or do this behavior, at that point, then think, right, how could I get this in other ways? Because there are a million different ways to get what you want in your life. So let's say you're bored. And eating sugar or having a drink of wine is not gonna make you unbored. It's not gonna make any difference. What's gonna make you unbored is working out what would make you interested, what would make you intrigued, and then go do that. So those are a few points. There's lots more I could say, but just as a starting point, notice, don't use the word addiction. Just go, oh, this is a habit. This is a behavior I've got very used to. I got used to that, I could change it. Secondly, notice when it's occurring. Sometimes you'll notice after it's occurred, as the biscuit is in your mouth. That's okay. Just track back and go, what happened before? And then ask this question, what did I really want or what do I really want? What did I really want if you've done the behavior, but if you've managed to interrupt that behavior, ask, okay, what do I really want? Really check inside. If you do that, you'll find you can transform this. Okay, guys, hope you find this useful. See you later. Bye.